sight to see. I wasn't even trying to film those deer. I was just putting the camera up against the window to get the sunset. And then I see deer crossing. I saw them running again. It's so cool. Say good morning, Penny. Penny, say good morning. No, you don't have to go to the groomer. Just Bernie, who's hiding under the table. He's getting his summer cut. Hey, Bernie, are you ready? I don't think he's ready. <laughs> he's gonna look like a new dog when we get back. Yeah. While Bernie's getting his hair cut, Craig and I are going to do the treadmills at the YMCA, AKA Indian Oloma Center. Getting started. Workout's done, and it's time to go get Bernie. She sent me the cutest picture of him that I'll, I'll post. He's in an Easter basket, and I have no idea how she got him to stay in that Easter basket. But probably because he was so There scared. he is, our little teddy bear dog. A little shorter than usual because I guess he had some mats, but he'll grow out. Might need a sweater until it gets a little warmer, though. How you doing, Bernie? He always seems happy, but he gets very nervous about leaving home. Craig, what do you think about Bernie's haircut? Nice touch. Do you like him better like this or when he's furry? I like him like this. What's for lunch today, Craig? Tuna fish sandwich with side salad. Caesar salad, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of those out of a bag. That's mm -hmm. what Craig wanted for lunch today. Yeah. Excuse his incredibly messy hair. It is very windy out today and we haven't combed our hair since we've been back. Craig's getting a haircut on Friday, so things are gonna get a lot better for his hair. I'd like to give a shout out to Alaska. As you may know, Alaska is the far frontier. They have whales, wolves, mooses, and snowy owls, and lynxes. The flag has the Big Dipper and the Northern Star. And what famous dog is from Alaska? Balto. We love you, Alaska, and thanks for watching. Doing his mounts or scything. We're doing our road trips. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Remember, our first one's not that far away when we go to the Omaha Zoo. And this one is the Amanda Colonies. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. What about Adventureland? Oh, we're going to Adventureland. Craig's using his new mat. I think he likes it. This was an awesome gift. Hello once again folks, it's time to make some chaffles. Tonight for dinner, we're trying chaffles for the first time, which is a keto recipe. Uh, it's the dough is very similar to the fat head keto dough, if not the same, depending on how you make it. Uh, and you put it in a waffle maker. We have our little one here. Tonight we're making pizza chaffles. And so we're gonna we're going pizza. to make the chaffles in this little yeah, yeah, yeah. waffle iron. Ah, and then job. we'll put pizza toppings on them and put them in the oven to get the top part crispy and cooked. Cha, cha, cha. So the first thing we need, Craig, is a half cup of almond flour. And the cup, I put that back there on the counter. Here's another one. Oh boy. Oh, you gotta level it off though. No, no. It's got otherwise oh, it's yeah. more than half a cup. There we go. Now pour that in. And then we need one half teaspoon of baking powder. And that's right here. Good job. And then we need to stir that up. Big fork and stir that up. Oh boy. And after we get that stirred up good, we add the eggs and two eggs and two tablespoons of cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking pretty good. Do you want to uh, get us two eggs? Two eggs. Mm -hmm. Check. Check, please. <laughs> Remember when we were getting all those double yolks? Yeah. That hasn't happened for a while now. But that was really weird. 
No. Drat them. Here, Don't. Here, let me help you. It's just your shell kind of just disintegrated. Okay. Maybe hit it a little harder on the bowl so it cracks all the way through it this time. There's an egg shell in it. Oh, good job. Just like throwing it on the floor. Okay. Yeah. I need to wash my hands and so do you. Someone commented that I need to teach Craig to wash his hands. He does wash his hands quite frequently. I don't show him washing his hands every time because like, I just figure people don't want to spend their time watching Craig wash his hands. So, and I know sometimes he now touches his it. nose and doesn't wash so his next? hands, but that's a habit. Okay, so um, we need two tablespoons of the cream. So I'll fill this up twice and Lord. put it in. And then you'll mix that up with the rest of the stuff before we put in the mozzarella. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our little waffle iron here. These chaffles are very versatile. There are so many things they're doing with them now. They make chocolate chaffles, garlic bread chaffles, there's churro chaffles, which we might try a little later because Craig's really interested in those. I can't even remember all the mm. different ways they make these, but they're very adaptable. We should have known. If we like this, we'll probably be trying more ways with chuckles. Okay, now, I mixed up a little bit better. And we need to add one half a cup of mozzarella cheese. That thing really smells. I don't know if we've ever used this waffle iron before, if you want to know the truth. What? I don't what? know if we've ever made the little waffles before. Let's move this out of the way. What? Kind of a... Yeah, I know Bennett got that for us for Christmas one year, and I think it got stuck in the cupboard and forgot about. And so and now I'm really glad we have it because a lot of the recipes call for these mini waffles. Okay, I'm gonna pour that in. You can just put that in here. Okay, we pour in the cheese and then we'll mix that in, good. And then it's ready to go into the waffle maker. And it says we put a fourth, a little less than a fourth of a cup of batter in this. I'm going to spray it just a little bit. So we don't have to worry about it sticking at all. It shouldn't, but this is kind of a weird batter, so you never know. Okay, let's get a fourth of a cup. Okay, so you want to... Okay, and just pour that in the waffle maker. Okay, and then we'll shut it. And I think when the light goes off, it's done, and, and then it says to turn it over, fit it back in, and cook it through another cycle. What about dessert, Mama? Do you want to make the chocolates for dessert, or do you want to make the ice cream for dessert? Or do you want berries and cream for dessert? Berries and cream. Okay. Totally On second, I'll have the ice cream. Okay. What kind of ice cream should we make? Cheesecake. Okay. We're having a banana? Mm-hmm. Craig and I have started something where we are going to shout out all 50 states in alphabetical order. Right now, we've done Alabama and Alaska. We're going to do it each day. We'll do a short on it. And this is really helping me to learn more about the states and Craig. And it's kind of fun to learn together. Some things Craig already knows, and I already know too, but there are many things that I don't know about the states. I wasn't very good at listening in geography because it just wasn't interesting to me in middle school. But now it's much more interesting to me, especially since 
we're traveling more. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's looking good. I think maybe we need to turn it over. Let me get a fork. So we will get to your state eventually, depending on where you are, your state is in the alphabet. But also I would like to ask if there's something unique or unusual about your state, please say it in the comments or send me an email at rdailyview1992 at gmail.com and I'll make a note of it so that when it gets to your state, we can include that in our shout out. That'd really help us out because a lot of the things that I've been finding there, we have a book and I've been watching videos, uh, some videos online, facts about different states. They don't include a lot of the fun stuff. It's just like general information. So if you have anything like a nickname for your state or something your name's known for, uh, let me know. Okay, I think that looks good. Now we need to get a baking sheet. We need more of these. We'll make more of them. Um, we need, for now, we're gonna put that right there. Yes, you wanna put, let's make another one. Well, this is very easy to do. These parchment sheets are a great thing to buy at Dollar Tree if you haven't already discovered them. Dollar twenty-five, and you get. I'm looking for it to say. I think I tore that part off of it, but there's several in here, and it's nice to just fit right on your cookie sheets. Of course, if you have a bigger cookie sheet, then you have to have more than one. Okay. Put the Toffle on our cookie sheet. I think we can bring this over here. Keeping this stuff out in case we need to make more batter. And we'll make the pizza ones and then we will see about mixing some more up to make some churro ones. Or you wanted ice cream instead tonight. Churros! Okay, <laughs> let's try the churros. I think it's just going to be a matter of adding a few extra ingredients. So, oh, I think it's done. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Let's turn it over. That one's really fluffy. Just, yep, there we go. Here they are. Looks, actually looks perfect. I'm going to preheat the oven. I'm going to do... Madam Min from the Sword and the Stone. Mm -hmm. We have a convection oven, so I set it on convection because mainly what we want to do is just cook the top of it, cook the, the pepperoni and make the cheese all nice and bubbly. I guess right now, Craig, you could go ahead and put stuff on your little pizza no. here. Maybe we'll give that just a little bit more time. Oh, that's good. Okay, here's some pizza topping. What about the cheese? Oh yeah, get you some cheese. Let's move this over so they can see what you're doing. I'll move this, there we go. Now they can see you, I think. Okay. Another one there. Just Do that. Mm -hmm. Probably make two of them. You're doing a great job. Do you want bacon bits on it or onion? I'm bacon bits. Okay. for a nail trim too, I was noticing, or did you already have dad do it? 
Oh boy. Ooh. Oops. For some reason. Oh great, that one's sticking. Let's see what happens here. All right, you want to do this one too? Yeah. Okay. Sauce. And put You're doing a good job. Maybe we'll go ahead and put these in the oven. Make the other one. Make the other ones. Craig's an expert pizza maker. Oh good, it's not sticking anymore. I just lifted the lid too soon. I think you can actually bake ingredients into the chocolate too, which I'm all about doing that. Like maybe some chopped green onions and I'd love to make the garlic ones. How's that? Okay, should we put yours in the oven? Two of them for me? Mm-hmm. Thank you. They're not very big. Okay. Can I go now? Yeah. You want to go while they bake? Okay. What about, about the cinnamon Okay, one? I'll finish those, and then after that, then we'll figure out how to make the cinnamon ones. Okay, here's what they look like. They look pretty good. Let's see what Craig thinks of them. If they're good, these are very, very easy to make. These are, this was easier than making the regular pizzas, but I don't know if it's as good, we'll see. Mm, it's good. You like it? You mm -hmm. like it as well as the pizzas we made? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. We can make these anytime. That's really easy mm -hmm. and good for keto. Do you give it two thumbs up or one thumb up? Two thumbs up. All right. Craig had enough, but I am going to make the churro chaffles. Basically, we just start out and make the same batter that we did for the pizzas with one half cup of almond flour and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. We just mix that together. It's all good. We add two eggs. Two tablespoons of cream. Then you mix it up. I'm using this big fork. You could use whatever you want to. You could use a whisk. But I'm just using this big, I don't know what this is for actually. I got it at one of the thrift stores. Because it was good for mixing things. I think I got it to make, for mixing tuna salad because um, actually it was Joe's idea. He thought a big fork would work better for mixing it. And it does. So I got that mixed up. Now add in half a cup of mozzarella cheese. Perfect. To the batter, I'm going to add one teaspoon of Swerve sugar substitute. I have the confectioner sugar. I don't know if they have granulated, but I'm sure this will work fine. And a teaspoon of cinnamon. About half a teaspoon, but I like things really cinnamony. Okay, now I just have to cook these in the waffle maker. When they're done, I will mix up some sh uh, brown sugar substitute and some cinnamon. We'll melt some butter and put over the chaffles and then uh, sprinkle them generously with the brown sugar and cinnamon. So the next step is 
to make the chuckles. And put it right into the little waffle iron. Shut it up. And we're going to melt our butter in the microwave. We won't use all this, but oops, ooh, my waffle. I may put too much waffle stuff in. It's oozing out. And we're gonna take some of our swerve brown sugar and just put some in here. It looks and smells exactly like brown sugar, which is pretty cool. Zero sugar zero calories and I've had it on my pancakes and it's so good and I'm going to take about, a, about half a teaspoon of cinnamon and we'll just mix that up good when the waffle's done we will put some of the melted butter on it and dip it in this brown sugar and cinnamon Butter's ready. I need a pastry brush. And here's our whole pan of these little chaffle pizzas that I made. I put some pineapple on some of them. I made some of them with Canadian bacon, pepperoni, and bacon bits like Joe and Craig like them. So I'm really anxious to try these. But first I must make the chuffles. Oh, it's looking good. Here's what it looks like. Put some butter on it. Put it on both sides. And we're going to put it in the brown sugar with the cinnamon. And we'll see what Craig thinks. I think it's Here's what it looks like. Doesn't that look delicious? What do you think? <laughs> Smells pretty delicious, doesn't it? Mm. What do you think? Mm. It's like cinnamon rolls. Oh, well, that's a big plus. Mm, I can't wait to try it now. Can I try a bite? Sure. Oh, yeah. That's really good. It's a nice, sweet way to end a meal. Let me give you my opinion right quick so I can finish making the churro chuffles. It's very good. I like this better than the other way made the pizza. It just doesn't seem as heavy. Really? That's what the, yeah, the crust, crust on the other one really fill, fills you up. Mm -hmm. I think because it's from the waffle maker maybe, it seems more light. It's thick, but it's airy, like, you know, like a waffle is, so. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Whoop. Check on the chuckle. Chuckle. The dogs are down below. They're hoping I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, this one's just as good. Craig certainly liked it. <laughs> I bet. Which is great because this is so easy. This one is called The Berenstain Bears Easter Sunday by Mike Berenstain. It was a beautiful spring morning in bear country. The rising sun spread its golden light over the land. Robins were chirping in the trees. Bright spring flowers were in bloom. New green leaves were all a bud. But it wasn't just any beautiful spring morning. It was Easter Sunday. Things were bustling in the bear family's treehouse as they got ready for church. Everyone, Mama and Papa, all the way to brother and sister and honey, were dressed in Easter best. 
bright colors instead of their everyday clothes. Why do we put on special clothes for Easter, Mama? Asked Sister as they admired themselves in the mirror. Bright colors are for happy, joyous occasions, Mama explained. And Easter Sunday is the most joyous occasion of all, added Papa. The bears joined a parade of other brightly dressed families on their way to the chapel in the woods. They greeted friends as they filled in and found their places. Their neighbor, Ms. McGriz, played the organ. Rich, deep tones filled the church. The cubs could feel those low, rumbling notes right down in their tummies. Then Preacher Brown spoke, I bid you all welcome on this joyous Easter morning. Let us celebrate the most wonderful day that God has made, the day when Jesus rose. Ms. McGriz brought her hands down on the keyboard and the organ boomed to life. Everyone stood to sing in Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is rise today, hallelujah. Voices joined with the roar of the organ and rose to heaven in a great joyous noise. The cubs could feel it right down to their bones. Jesus Christ is rising to a alleluia. A triumphant holy day, alleluia. As the hymns closed, Preacher Brown stood at the pulpit. Easter is indeed a joyous occasion, he began. Let us remember this glorious story of Easter. A story of a new life for the whole world. He told them of Easter how Jesus came to the city of Jerusalem and was greeted with joy. How he ate the last supper with those who loved him, but turned one turn against him. How he was taken prisoner and put to death. And how he rose from the dead. The cubs knew the story. But hearing it in the church on Easter morning made it seemed deeper and closer. It stayed with them for the rest of the service and surely would, would for the rest of the day. After church, there was an Easter treasure hunt for the cubs. Miss, Miss McGriz had hid little brightly colored gift boxes all around the churchyard. Inside each was a figure from the story of Noah's Ark. A little Noah, a Mrs. Noah, their sons and wives, and dozens of animals. The cubs had fun finding them all and putting them together in a big Noah's Ark scene. This is even more fun than an Easter egg hunt, said sister. Yes, said Miss McGriz. We thought using a Bible story would be more fitting here at church. That made Brother wonder. Is there anything in the Bible about Easter eggs and the Easter Bunny, he asked. Preacher Brown said, sir, no, brother, not a thing. Then where did the idea of Easter eggs and the Easter Bunny come from, asked sister. For those who love to live long ago, explained the preacher, before Jesus came into the world, spring was a very special time of year. It was a time when new life started in the earth. Everyone noticed that birds laid their eggs in spring, and baby birds hatched out, had their babies, and lots and lots of babies in springtime too. So, said the preacher, since Easter comes in the spring and many animal babies are born in the spring. Oh, I see, said brother. They just sort of got mixed up together. Is that right? Yes, said Preacher Brown. They don't really have anything to do with each other. They just happen to come at the same time of year and both have to do with new life. But Sister Wunt was worried. Does that mean that we shouldn't have Easter eggs, chocolate bunnies, or candy on Easter? She asked. Well, said the preacher, some good people do believe that, but others think that they, as long as you remember, 
that Easter eggs and bunnies and candy don't really have anything to do with Jesus and Easter. It's okay. Good, said sister. She likes Easter candy, especially jelly beans. The bear family said goodbye to Preacher Brown, Ms. McGriz, and the rest of their friends at the chapel in the woods and walked home through the beautiful spring countryside. They saw robins nesting on their pretty blue eggs and families of bunnies hopping about with their new babies. Look, said sister, those are real live Easter eggs and Easter bunnies. Mama smiled. I think those kind of eggs and bunnies are much more of a part of Easter than any painted cakes or chocolate bunnies. She said, they are a part of God's creation. Yes, Papa agreed. Just like we are part of God's creation too. Later, the family sat down to a delicious Easter dinner. Lord, prayed Papa as they joined hands, we thank for our Easter meal and for the greatest love of all that came to us on that first Easter Sunday long ago. Amen. Amen, they all said. And as they ate, the bears gazed on their treehouse window, enjoying the beautiful spring day in bear country. The end. And this is Craig A. Vavra saying, if you like this video, click like and subscribe and keep on having a great day.